everybody out there in YouTube land. This is Jen and Christian's with me. And yes, I'm still on fucking vacation, but I had to wash the Hawaiian shirt and I, ha I haven't had a chance to raid your grandfather's closet yet. There you go. So yeah, but, but just because I'm not, uh, we might go to like destinations. I feel like going to Les France, so maybe I'll wear a beret in the next one. Okay. Um, uh, so this video is 20 for 20, and this is brought to us by some two very awesome dudes in the horror community, Jason J.M. of Horrific Nightmares and Joe the Horror Man. They came up with this list, and this is their 20 for 20. And what is this 20 for 20 now? Top 20 for 2000 to 2009, which funnily enough, as we talked about on the last stream, we were already making this list and planning to do this in April, and then we found out, oh, that's this week's 20 for 20. You're like, why not? We'll do it a little early. Sure, and this one was fun. Uh, there's a lot of gems, and well, there's a lot of gems in every. As we talked about on the stream, there's a lot of gems for me, like every decade. Yeah, but this one has some. So, and again, this is going to be like with, with the way we did with the one. Now, that doesn't guarantee it's going to be a quick video because yeah, God knows well, the other one wasn't. Well, you're in the future. You see how long the run time is. We're sorry, or maybe we're you're welcome. We're probably sorry though. More than just throw, just you know, enjoy your vacation and listen to us in the background. Exactly. Um. Yeah. And this is what we, when we're doing the same format that we did um for the last video where we picked twenty films, but Christian and I both picked twenty, and then we had to battle it out with each other for what movies would make it into the top 20 list combined. Yeah, so the the, the list that you're going to see is a compilation of both of our top 20 lists. Exactly. So there are a couple of movies that I would have really liked to put on this list that didn't make it and same for Christian. Same, yeah. So speaking of all that since we didn't these are movies that for whatever reason didn't make the list but we still probably if we were doing individual lists they would have Yes, made it. absolutely. But because we have to do a Sherry thing, um like Sherry Baby of the Four Seasons. Okay. Not Vervaldi Four Seasons, but Sherry, as in the Four Seasons, as in Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons. You're welcome. Are we talking about Jersey Boys or are we talking about a horror movie, God damn it? Both. Oh. Okay, so okay. This, so because of this, we will start our honorable mentions, and I think I'll go first because I just have one. Yeah, which... Hmm. is going to piss people off, but also tell you one movie that is on the list. Okay, so with this, um, one of the rules in this thing was you can only have one horror movie per director. Per director and per franchise. Per franchise, yes, exactly. And um, this movie, had this been, like had I not been having to share this with Christian and just done my 20, the movie that made it on the list probably wouldn't have made it um, because I actually really fought for this uh, movie, but Christian uh, made a up some good points and he also brought out that the whole horror community would be behind him yeah so yeah but I'm gonna say it anyway because I think it is a brilliant movie and no I'm not being a contrarian I'm not trying to piss people off I understand if you're not a big fan of this particular movie but Christian can back me up I have She's loved it before we did the channel yeah I love this movie and that would be Rob Zombie's Halloween I think it is a criminally underrated film and I know a lot of people even good friends of mine are going god she's lost it but i really really passionately love this movie is it as good as the original no it's not as good as there is john carpenter's original classic halloween but i like that he went in a completely different direction and i don't think even if you even people who hate it can't say that there aren't some good things even about I, it. I, I i always describe rob zombie's halloween as it's a good movie and then it becomes a remake of halloween in the last four minutes and it falls all apart. See, I, I love it. I think the performance by Sherry Moon Zombie, I, I've done a review on this if you want me to go in depth, but two Halloweens ago? Yeah, two Halloweens ago. Yeah, but all the actors in this give great performances. Uh, Brad Dorff brings his manic energy. Malcolm McDowell is he, he's, not the, he's not our Loomis. He's not our darling Donald Pleasance, but he brings a whole new spin to the, uh, to the Dr. Loomis character. I love it. I love this movie. I know I'm one of the the few people that do. I've loved it then. I love it now. Had this been just my own personal list that I didn't have to share with Christian, it would have been on the list. It would have been pretty high on the list as well. So that's my one big honorable mention. And no, again, I'm not doing this to piss anybody off. 
I just really feel very strongly about that movie. I understand that. Uh, I have three but ones. But I'm wrong, that, right? Yes, you're wrong entirely. I have three ones that I'm just gonna rapid fire through. Uh, now, one remake that I really wanted, but I'm, I understand why it didn't make the list is Texas Chainsaw Massacre from Platinum Dunes from 2003. I think it's a fucking phenomenal film. I think it's on par, if not surpasses, the original in many aspects. I really, really think it's one of the strongest remakes ever made. Ever, everybody gives some great performances. It has one of my favorite opening scenes in any movie. The tracking shot through that girl's head is amazing. But I can understand why, because you're not one, not as crazy about it, and we wanted to not have this list be super remake heavy. Yeah, and there was another remake that did make the list. It there was are two. Yeah, there's two remakes that made the list. Yeah, so, there is. Yeah. So. Uh, then, then one other that... Uh, I knew I had no fucking chance of making no. it on the list proper, be, but f because you fucking despise this movie, see last year's Halloween video on it if you want more clarification as to why she hates it. Uh, whereas I consider it one of my favorite movies of all time, Satan's Little Helper. I love the fuck out of this movie. It is one of the most enjoyable and fun movies I've ever seen. For I, you. Yes, absolutely. She thinks it's one of the most tedious pieces of bullshit she's ever seen in her life. Yeah. So that's why that one's not on the list. If it was, if it, however, if it was my list, it would be in the top five, gonna be real. So, yeah. If oh. I didn't get fucking Halloween on the list, he sure as shit wasn't gonna get Satan's little helper. So yeah, that's that's my Fucker. honorable mentions. Shall we get onto the list proper? Sure. Um, okay, so, so number 20. Number 20. This one was one that you were a little lukewarm to put on the list. Yeah, that's why it's number 20. The first two, I'm very like, okay, they're more for you, but you let me have some stuff on, so I'll let you have this. Um, the, what, and this is definitely one more of a me movie. Um, they're going to be doing a reboot sometime, hopefully. Well, it's which, probably on, de on, cance on delay right now. But, yeah. yeah, because of vacation time. But it was, before all this happened, it was supposed to be out, I think, this summer. And um, this is, but it, this is the original. This is where it started. It has a fuck ton of sequels, and that is Wrong Turn. I really like this movie because this movie came out in a time where horror was going in a very different direction. And this one was kind of just a dirty, you know, it, the horror was kind of clean and more PG-13 yeah, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, a lot of a lot of that was left over from the 90s. Yeah, yeah, and this one actually just felt like kind of a throwback to like early 90s, late 80s kind of slasher films. It's dirty, it, it doesn't have that great of a plot, but it's a fun plot. Like a can of, fucking inbred cannibals, the guy from um, Six Feet Under, the one that played the Crazy Brothers in it, has a good cast, has some really good kills, and inbred fucking cannibals. And it came out in a time when you didn't. These movies were few and far between. Yeah. And I think it's a. And obviously, other people for doing a reboot. That the other people must like this. True too. enough. Yeah. And I don't think it gets enough love. So wrong turn is our number twenty. What's our number nineteen? Why you know it? Oh yeah, I do. Again, this one again, is. Again, this is another one that's for you. So yeah, I'll this just is let you pitch it. Yeah, you knew this would make the list, didn't you? I had a pretty good idea you were gonna be. You were I for this one. Yeah. passionately love this movie, and it is a Black Christmas remake. No, not that Black Christmas remake. There was one that came out in two thousand and six that I fucking love, and you know, after you see it, you gotta admit. It's better than that one. Yeah. A lot but better. This one still had the yellow bastard in it for no reason, so I still don't like this movie. This very one, much. I love this. I got to see this one in the theater, and I had such a blast with it. And, and the, there was a few people in that theater, and everyone seemed to be having a good time with this movie. It's dirty. It has a lot of really gory kills. It has a humor, which I really love. The opening shot where we're in an insane asylum, and he's telling everyone Merry Christmas, and then we get to a guy that looks suspiciously like Jesus. And and the orderly says happy birthday. The, I mean, I appreciate those little touches. We have one of the actresses from the original Black mm -hmm. Christmas in this. I mean, I think it's a fun movie. And again, it's one that, Jen, I know a lot of people don't particularly like this movie. Although I think it's getting more I'm just love really now. I'm just really indifferent to this movie. I don't have a strong opinion of it either way. I think I think the original surpasses it. But I don't think it's like one of the worst remakes ever. This is one of my favorites. And also, I also, this is a movie that every Christmas time I always put it on. On, and I'm not one to do that very much, but that's how much I love this mm -hmm. movie. This is my go-to Christmas movie. So the remake from Black Christmas from 2006 is why this is on the list, and I had to fight for this one. Yes, you did. Okay. So, so next one, one oh, oh, I'm okay, totally okay with having on the list, that being Final Destination. Yeah. 
I like that movie. It's a real good movie. <laughs> Why did you? Because you, because because uh, you were really wanted it on the list. Why did you really want it on? I really wanted Final Destination on because I think it's an underrated gem. I think this is a movie that people don't really talk about that much, even though it has a bunch of sequels. I think it does have a cult following. But the actual first movie, I think, has very straight. Much like um, Black Christmas, it has a sense of humor about itself. The kills are great. Um, I also love that. There's a performance by Tony Todd. Tony he, do Todd. He, he doesn't have a big performance, but he plays an undertaker, and he is legitimately creepy. And um, you don't want to fuck with that motherfucker. Yeah. You know, I think this is a really fun movie. This is a movie that I return to from time to time. I really enjoy it. And like I said, it's a, it's like a wrong turn. It, it doesn't have a huge following, but it does have a cult following. And the movies are fun. Now, they get kind of stupider as we go along, but that's with any franchise. But I think the, legit the first... Uh, a Final Destination is a legitimately good movie. I get that. Here's one that I didn't even consider that you really wanted. Mm -hmm. It's Ed Gein. And Christian kind of at first was a little bit hesitant to put it on the list, but I did. the reason why, or the argument I gave him is the same one I'm going to give you people. Uh, there was a lot of Ed Geins, and the one I guess I should specify, this is the Ed Gein with Steve Railsback and Carrie Snorgrass, and I'm somewhat of an Ed gein -ophile. The one that was a part of, like, because in the early 2000s, they, in the late 90s, they did this where they did, like, a bunch of... Gacy. Uh, Gacy, Dumber, Dumber. I think they did a Ramirez. Uh, and eventually they did a Kemper. Yeah, yeah. So there's, there was a bunch of straight-to-video serial killer movies with kind of high-profile actors playing the serial killers. This is a, the one that was a part of that series. And I would argue that this is probably the best one of the bunch. Um, Steve Rollsback gives a, a very great performance. Carrie Snordgrass plays his mother. And Christian was like, is this more of a kind of a docudrama because mm. of the of the of, of, of a serial killer? But and because the body count is low, but we're dealing with necrophilia. We're dealing with cannibal. We're dealing with mother issues. And Ed Gein, you got to remember, is sort of the template for horror well, because he was an inspiration for Texas Chainsaw Massacre. He was an inspiration for Psycho. He was an inspiration for Silence of the Lambs. He's been, and probably a lot of other movies oh, I'm, I'm not yeah. thinking Plus of. all the movies that those movies inspired, too. Exactly, exactly. He's kind of like the godfather of horror, if you really look at it this way. Um, and he was a, a fascinating story. And this story stays pretty much on point of the real case. This one doesn't get too it does have kind of tries to give a lot of insight into his mother but apparently that was a real mm -hmm, thing yeah. like yeah he basically wanted to fuck his mommy and his mommy made him hate all women it's an it's one that doesn't get talked about too much and I honestly say you should definitely check it out like I said Steve Rillsback is amazing he gets the accent down right he gets the look down right and Carrie Norrisgrass is the mother from hell she's yeah. another one that you just don't want as a mother I get that Okay, here's one that I really wanted for that you're kind of just indifferent to, but mm -hmm. I really want this because this is one of my favorite films one, from one of my favorite directors. Mm -hmm. My favorite Guillermo del Toro movie, The Devil's Backbone. Mm -hmm. This film is probably... Th this is like uh, right alongside the original Haunting and The Changeling for my favorite ghost stories in all of cinema. I absolutely adore everything about this film. It The set design is amazingly beautiful. The, the acting, the performance... One of the very few... This is one thing I always and be amazed if Guillermo del Toro for is he actually is one of the very few directors that can actually find good kid actors because every single child actor in this movie is actually really fucking good. Yeah, I'll give you that. Um, I just and it has such a creepy atmosphere. It does what Guillermo did best, and a lot of people would argue he perfected in Pan's Labyrinth of having a childlike wonder, but spinning that around and making that childlike wonder really sinister and creepy. Yeah, and I really, really passionately love Devil's Backbone. I knew you did. Yeah. I knew you did. So, it's going from that to a movie with a dick monster. Yeah, Bad Biology. Again, thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Um, this movie, you gotta have... A, what the, my, my reasoning for making this one on the list is you gotta have a fun one. And yeah, there's a couple fun ones that we've already acknowledged on this one. But this one is also a creature feature, it, and it's a fun one. And it also has a giant dick monster. That's the creature in the feature. Yeah, I really like this movie. Dave thought we would, and we did. You, you were right about that. Dave, this movie is amazing. Fucking, I should have known when, I, when it was a Hen and Lawther movie. Yeah, it's amazing. It's great. It, it's one that, uh, again, doesn't get talked about too much. We didn't even know about I, it. I knew about this movie, but I couldn't try. I had only recently tracked down a copy. So, yeah, I've been, made, and I've been meaning to see this movie forever because I'm a big Hen and Lawther fanboy. So, 
Yeah, bad, Defin bi bad biology is really good. Definitely, if you can track it down, definitely watch it because it's fun, it, it, it's gory, it's everything. It's definitely not a serious one, but if you're just looking for a good time, this one will definitely fill the bill. It's really damn funny. It is. Okay, number 14. This is another one that's more of a me thing when you I'm think. okay with having it on here, though. Um, Open Water, and one of the reasons why this one made on it, again, I did a review on this. And See, Shark a, Week from last year. Um, uh, This one what this one has a hell of a backstory. I appreciate this movie because this was a passion project for a husband and wife team. They put in their own money. They shot this on the weekends. They used real sharks. And it's it, the story is, yes, we've been there and done that, but it's done incredibly tightly. I'd incredibly also argue well. it was fairly fresh for the time it came out. Yeah. Like, a lot of movies rip the, rip the open water off, but for the time it was a fairly fresh story. It was, and it was another, and it was kind of like uh, how we were doing with the Blair Witch and some of those, you know, the, uh, the, the found footage. Found to a degree. Footage. This was also one of those movies that kind of like it. It kind of start. It, it. It. I would say it downright did like revive the shark genre because because mm -hmm. before that in the nineties the only one you had was like Deep Blue Sea. Yeah. 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 I really like. Uh, uh, I really like Open Water and I. I and it's it is sort of heartbreaking toward the end. Mm -hmm. You know where yeah. you have that and it it's a sad one. Uh, their sequels aren't too bad for the, the most part. The second one was was. Well, yeah, yeah. It was weird. The third one, which apparently most people hate, we liked. Yeah, we really did. These are actually really good. And like I said, for the backstory and for the actual story in front of the camera, I thought it was worth a mention. And like I said, if you don't know the backstory, go check out my review because it's a hell of a backstory. Yes. So, the next one. Uh, next one. The last remake on the list. Ah, yes. The last remake on the list. And this one, and it's another one, because I remember when this came out, um, people did not like this one, and I, and I, it, I did it. I loved this one. Like, I, I like didn't this get movie why, a lot. I didn't get why all the hate was, although it seems to be slowly turning around, but I think this is an incredibly good remake, and that would be Friday the 13th. It's, it's pretty good. Now, granted, some of the victims are douchebags, but they're supposed to be douchebags. And that guy from Supernatural. I, exactly. They both did movies. <laughs> Not the guy from Supernatural that's in My Bloody Valentine, which came out two weeks prior to this one, but the one that was in the Friday the 13th remake. He was a douchebag, and but it was fun when mm -hmm. he gets his upcoming. Yeah. Uh, why did you allow this one on the thing? Because I like this movie. I really like this movie. I prefer Chainsaw over it, but I also prefer the My Bloody Valentine remake over it. If I'm gonna be really honest, mm -hmm. but I love Friday the Thirteenth remake. I think it's really underappreciated. I think it has some really fun kills. I like how this movie really kind of because I like when I heard the directors say like okay we're gonna finally we have to make a decision before we even make this is Jason a zombie or is he an <laughs> actual fucking guy we have to decide this and not play, and jump around I like how they actually explain how the fuck he's teleporting everywhere with the tunnels under Crystal Lake and everything I like a lot of the ideas this movie introduces to the franchise I like a lot of the cast I like a lot of the kills I think it's a really fun movie yeah it is and it's another one that kind of mixes horror and humor very well but it's still very respectful to the actual source material Absolutely. that it's taken from. So yeah, I thought this one definitely deserved to be on the list. Number 12. Hostile, or the first, was this the first torture porn? No, there were no, others. No, there were this others. This one kind of jump-started the genre again. This is the one that kind of created the genre, like gave the genre a name of torture porn. Yeah, it's it's a pretty, you prefer the second I, one. If this was my list, I would say I like Hostile 2 better. I think that one has a more interesting story, but I would totally cool with the original Hostile being on there, because I like the original Hostile. It's a good movie. And again, it came out in a time when it was kind of PG-13. Yeah, yeah, like it, say what you will about you. Eli Roth, but at least the, I'll get, I'll, you can't argue that the dude at least kind of revived the horror was going to be, you know, brutal and gory for a while. Yeah, make horror horror. Yeah, yeah he was basically. one of the few directors that was actually, him and Rob Zombie were like the only two directors that went mainstream that actually did that. Basically balls to the walls horror. Absolutely. And um, yeah, I really like that. I love some of the creative kills. The second one is fun too. I, a lot of people pan the second one. But the, the reason I like the second one more is I like our, I, I actually really like our main heroine in that. I think she's a really fun an interesting character. I really like her. I get that. But the first one is really good too. If you just want some really bloody gory fun, Hostel's definitely for you. I think it's a game changer in horror genre and it had to be on our list. How pissed are people going to be that we don't have a Saw movie on here but we have a Hostel movie, man? Spoilers! We don't have a Saw movie on here. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> okay. Number 10 or 11. 
We've got The Strangers. I fucking love The Strangers. It's How much do you love the second one, sweetheart? I know a lot of, no offense to anybody that loves Strangers Pray at Night, but I fucking hated that movie. Again, go back and see our really early video on that one. Or don't, because it hasn't aged that well. But a lot of my opinions are still true about that movie. Um, I, but the original Strangers is probably like my second favorite home invasion movie. Possibly my first. I fucking love this film. Kind of like we've been saying, it was a big change to form and it was a big game changer when it came out. Exactly. It really, it, it revived the home invasion genre, which before this was like, besides a few like foreign films, it was basically a dead genre at this point. And then The Strangers came out and revived it and brought a lot, and then we got, you know, which you can argue if that's a good thing or not, because we got a lot of crappy ones, but we got some good stuff out of the out of the revival of the genre. And I really, really love The Strangers. It's one of the few movies that legitimately that I still say is legitimately creepy. Mm -hmm. Even on rewatches, there's a lot of scenes that I think are really creepy in that movie. Yeah, it's a movie that still holds up, and it's been a while since this movie came out. It is a really good movie. It's it's fun. It's another one that's really fun. Mm -hmm. The Home Invasion is a... Yeah, you're right. The Home Invasion, it kind of did give it a breath of fresh air. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, The Strangers is definitely one that had to be on the list. Holy shit, we finally put a found footage movie on. Exactly! Exactly. Um, The Poughkeepsie Tapes. Poughkeepsie Tapes, a movie we've talked about quite a bit. Yes. Which I believe haven't... Have we, have we, is this one of the few movies that we did a vlog and you did a review on? I didn't do a review, but I would okay. like to. I, okay, yeah. I really need to. Um, the Poughkeepsie Tapes, this is one that you don't hear a lot talked about, but you should, because this movie... the re Okay, this is a movie that's very interesting, because on a second rewatch, I watched this movie by myself super late one night. Christian was in Texas, and um, you were. Yeah, I was in Texas. Yeah, you were in Texas, and During I various Texas things. Yes, he was. his grandfather works up there. So, yeah, he was in Texas, and he was coming home pretty soon, but I decided I wanted to watch the Poughkeepsie Tapes, and I'm an insomniac, so, of course, I watched it super late one night, and literally, the, the, the movie, uh, there was a scene in this movie that unnerved me so much, after the movie was over, I literally got up and checked to make sure the front door was locked, and that tells me, and I generally don't get creeped out by movies, it happens so very rarely, but there is a scene in this movie that le legitimately creeped me the fuck fuck out and being home alone you know uh, you know just a little woman by myself with no man to protect me um it really creeped me mm -hmm. out it really did there is a scene where where somebody gets into a house and it oh man they hold the shot for so long and it's just fucking unnerving as hell yeah it really did now i will acknowledge upon a second viewing that this movie does have show some strength it does. it's not a perfect film but i had to have it on this list because it generally did unnerve me and not many movies do that, but this one, literally, after it was over, I had to make sure that the fucking door was locked. Yeah. Um. How well, you plus, there's a lot. Th th I really like. I'm. I really like this movie too because, it, unlike a lot of like found footage movies, this movie does a lot of like little details that are really appreciated. Little like little subtlenesses and a lot of things you wouldn't see in a, a whole, in like a found footage movie. For instance, there there is an out of nowhere interview with is it Dahmer? I think it's Dahmer. They just no, uh, not Dahmer. Um, uh, is it Gacy? No, not gay. See, Bundy. Bundy, yeah. There's an out-of-nowhere interview with uh, an actor playing Bundy in the movie. And it's a really damn funny scene that... He's it, basically profiling the Yeah, guy. which has... Which had both of us go, God damn it, Bundy, <laughs> when the scene was over. It was really damn funny. This movie has a, a couple little funny jokes in it. There's a great scene where a character's being interviewed about what happened to them. And, like, she scratches an itch, but there's just, like, a nub hand there. The movie never addresses this, but I just love that little tiny touch there. The, the reason I really uh, like this movie and why it's on the list for me is why is because of all the little details this movie has. Yeah, it does, and it takes you on a ride. And you so even for a hardened horror height, you think you know where this movie's going. And this some, movie goes to some fucked up places. This goes to some dark places. I fucking love this movie. I really do. Um, you really liked it too. I really dug this movie. It is really damn good. Yeah, yeah. So this one had to be. In fa and I'm kind of thinking it should have maybe gone higher, but we've already. <laughs> set the list. But yeah, definitely uh, Poughkeepsie Tapes. If you have not seen this one, guys, check it out. Hobbs, I think you'd really yeah, like this one. Yeah, if you haven't one. seen it, it's very similar to Hangman in a lot of ways, but very different to Hangman. Yeah, I th I'd really love to hear your thoughts, so definitely check that one out. And anyone else who hasn't seen it, you're missing out.
So our next movie. Number nine, which I think is going to raise some eyebrows, considering we've, I don't think, ever talked about this movie before. We should have. We should have talked about this movie before oh. by now. You And Christian asked me, because this is one of my picks, and Christian asked me kind of why. I was very surprised, because I didn't know you liked this movie that much. I do. I really do. I think it's a good vampire movie, and that's one that you don't hear too much about, and it's 30 Days of Night. Yeah, it's I, fun. I, I like it. The Josh Hartman. I believe yeah, so. Yeah, he's in and he's really good, and it's about this little... Alaskan town and they're in they're vampires and it's always dark yeah yeah, yeah uh, which, they're living in the six months of night and yeah yeah, and it's it, it's a hell of a premise it's one of those premises where you think why hasn't this been done sooner literally uh because you knew it was based on a comic right the yeah. writer of the comic grew up in an Alaskan town and loved horror and was always like this would be a very cool setting for a vampire movie since it's night here half the fucking time. I should make that. And it, it really is. It's really good. Now, I have not read the comics or anything. They're but good. I really enjoy this movie. I think it's a great vampire. You don't you don't see too many vampire films, but this is one that I really thought was done right. It was fun. It was gory. It has a little bit of humor in it. It does. Too. It does. Um, but it, it's also very unnerving. It's a movie that's very unnerving in certain places. And like I said, I think the premise is just kind of brilliant and one you think you you would have seen before than this one but yeah. you didn't so very awesome movie definitely if you haven't checked it out check it out especially if you're a vampire fan because this one fits the bill perfectly and ignore the sequels oh yeah the sequels okay here's one of for me this is one of my all-time favorite movies it's that his I, baby yeah i love this movie I've, I've referenced this movie so many times i love the hell out of this movie i, I a lot of people will notice i it's kind of a running joke that i compare characters to the main character of this movie mm -hmm. kind of partially as a joke partially to, because i'm actually they do see some similarities. Uh, that being American Psycho. You love this I movie. I fucking adore American Psycho. It is one of my favorite movies. I think Christian Bale nails Bateman's perform portrayal perfectly, especially like from the text of the book. He brings the character straight off the page. He captures it perfectly while bringing his few, a few a little flourishes to it. And I legitimately think this is a great example of like a serial killer story. That it really shows like how it's one of the few movies that actually shows like how a megalomaniac actually really is in in reality, it, it really captures that everything well. Like, yeah, there's some great humor in the movie. There's some great, like, legit kind of creepy uh, scenes in the movie. There's some great horrific scenes about what it's implying about society in both the movie and the book. Mm -hmm. I really, really love American Psycho. It's one of my all-time favorites. I like it, too. And I don't touch the sequel, because fuck the sequel. It didn't happen. I was going to ask you It didn't that. happen. Fuck that movie. Wasn't it his sister? No. it No. Literally, that movie is about Mila Kunis, um, you know, from that 70s show, uh, killing Patrick Bateman as a child, and then she becomes a serial killer from it. Yeah. But also, she has to go to school and wacky hijinks. It feels like a fucking Mean Girls sequel more than anything. It's not. Fuck right. American Psycho 2. But American Psycho 1 is amazing. If you have not seen it for whatever reason, watch it. It's an essential movie movie in my opinion. It is a really good movie. Speaking of really good movies, our number seven is a damn good movie. Ooh. It is an anthology film. It is Trick or Treat. That's a good one. Who doesn't love Trick or Treat? It's one, My younger son discovered that about two years ago and man, he came, became obsessed mm -hmm. with it for quite a while. Um, it, All the anthologies are good. This is one of those movies that has, there's not really it's a It's right one. alongside like Creepshow is like one of the few anthology movies I've ever seen that actually has every single segment being good and watchable. Little Sam. Are we ever getting a sequel? You know, someday maybe. <laughs> um, I, I love the werewolves myself. The That's... werewolf segment's really good. I love, I love our opening segment with the serial killer. Mm -hmm. I always think that thing's so that thing's really damn funny and kind of sets up what the movie is perfectly. Mm -hmm. Go watch Charlie Brown. <laughs> Charlie Brown's an asshole. <laughs> I wonder how many people at cons shout that out. Uh, but it, yeah. It is really good. Um, I, I also like the one with the kids. Yeah, the, the kids. The, bus. The, yeah, the kids on the school bus is really good. I love how cold blooded the girl is at the end of that segment. Oh, yeah. And I also love. And, and the werewolf ones are just my favorite. I think it's such a sweet it's story. It's such a sweet, funny story. It really is. And I love how they connect all the stories. Oh, God. Together. This, is a, really this is a great example of a movie that's like 
connected like through and through. There's all kinds of little things other than like the obvious characters overlapping in the stories. There's all kinds of little subtle things all throughout the movie of like, oh, the ha you see the hands of a cat lady from like one segment pushing something in a were in the werewolf segment and all kinds of little things like that. There's a bunch of, much like Poughkeepsie Babes, there's a lot of little details that really make this movie work so well. Yeah, it really adds another level of shine to it. It's a great movie and I don't think anyone in this community has not seen it. In fact, you want to almost watch it again. I kind Kind of do, yeah. Exactly. Speaking of home invasion movies that were inspired by The Strangers. Exactly. The Collector. This was one of my picks because I fucking love, you know this. You I adore this movie. I, I do adore this movie. I think it's really great. Um, I love, uh, and this isn't a new thing or anything, but I love that our hero in it is really an anti-hero because he's going to rob, our hero is the guy that's going to rob these people. Mm -hmm. And um, I love how he is, a, it's a funny scene where he's like, like telling himself he's not going to get involved. He gets out of the hell, and but there's this kid back there, and he's like, God, and you see him all of a sudden stop, and he's like, God damn it. And you know he's going to go back for the kid, even though every instinct is saying, you know, it's not my kid, not my problem, yeah. fuck off. And he does the right thing. And it's a funny scene, but it's also very believable. Yeah. I really do love this movie, and I think some of the gore is just... Oh, uh, the fucking, like, saw, also kind of saw inspired with all the fucking traps everywhere. Uh-huh. Yeah. It really is... Um, it, it's 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 like another movie we're going to be talking about pretty soon where the sequel of this, I like the sequel, but the first one is legitimately, there are some really good tension scenes that kind of make you kind of hold your breath and really tense up, where the second one kind of goes it's for a, a little looser. It's a bit more like... I wow. like it. I the, still like I, it. I like the collection, but that scene in the dance club, anybody who's seen the movie knows the one I'm talking about. That scene always loses me with the movie. Like, it's a cool scene, but it just kind of like takes takes me out of it and like reminds me like, oh yeah, this is like a kind of a dumb popcorn movie. It seems very appropriate that our next movie, because both of these movies, the next one we're going to talk about, it, ha it has a sequel and the sequel also is yeah, very different Yeah, I prefer the sequel to the next movie more than the collection, but I like the collection just fine. I get that. And I'm curious what we're going to, if we're going to get the collect third this year. I hope so. I and hope I hope they keep that title. I love the collect third. I do That's too. such a good title. It really is. Um, our next movie is number six is Wolf Creek. This is one of my babies. Yeah. I fucking... See Halloween two years ago for her in-depth thoughts on that one. I fucking love Wolf Creek. I love the show. I love the actor. John Jarrett is just a fucking amazing. Well, we love the second season of the show. The first season is okay. It, yeah, Not but... essential viewing. Second season is, though. Yeah, it's just, and I hope we're getting a third one, hopefully. Creek. Sometime, eventually. Yeah, but I love the show, and I love this movie, and this is another movie. It came out at a time when you didn't get very PG sanitized horror, and then you get this dark, gritty, it's almost a throwback to 70s exploitation. Oh, it super is a throwback to 70s and exploitation. 80s too, to some which is kind of why I'm okay with uh, Wolf Creek 2 being a little bit more ridiculous, because that's more, also a love about Larry to 70s exploitation films, just a bit more ridiculous ones. Yeah. It's, Whereas that one's more like, I spit on your grave, or Cannibal Holocaust, like the really brutal fucking ones. It is. I was at the edge of the park. Oh, yeah. Uh, John Jarrett gives such a chilling performance, but the, and he, again, he's kind of reminds me of Norman Bates in a different way, but you like him so, so much. He's such a charming character while also being <laughs> such a fucking piece of shit. You know, he's raping a woman, but you still find him so goddamn charming. Mm -hmm. You really do. And that, that says something on the actor because, I mean, the actor, that's a hard role to pull off. He is a rapist, a murderer, a child killer. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, he's a bastard. But, and that's just in this movie. Yeah, that's not even counting the shit he did in the show or in the other movie. But he's he. There's something very likable about, and he embodies Mick so well. Mm -hmm. I just love this movie. Wolf Creek is in, and again. But when the scenes call for it, when he needs to be just like that'll make the hairs on the back of your neck stand up, he really does a good job. And that laugh. Oh just, God! Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just he's such an iconic character. He's one that I think should get a lot more love than he does. Absolutely, yeah. I really do. I fucking love Wolf Creek. Speaking of movies, I fucking love. Here's one that I'm sure a lot of people like who know you very well expected to be number one. Yeah, it probably would have been. Your favorite horror movie of all time. Maybe my precious, my precious. Um, what can I say about high tension that I haven't already? I. 
fucking love this movie. This is like one of the best movies ever. This is a movie that gets me vapor locked. When it is playing, whether I put it on or if it's just playing on a randomly on cable, I, I sit down and even if I've seen it, I can quote you fucking dialogue from this movie and yet I still will be vapor locked on this couch and watching it even if I have shit to do. Oh my god. Lesbians. 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 Yes, and, and, and whoever wrote this movie, I truly believe, I just read a little bit about psychology. Alexander Aja. Yeah, yeah, but he didn't read all of it. Which kind of helps the movie and hurts the movie, but it, 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 yeah. And the glorious opening scene where we have the guy literally getting head from a decapitated head. I knew when I saw that scene, I was like, oh my god, this is for me. It's, this is a movie for Jen. It's like how I reacted to a scene in a, to the opening of a movie we'll talk about in a minute. The, that movie had the same effect on me of like, well, this is a new favorite movie of mine instantly. Yeah, you just, I felt like I was in such good hands. It fucking kills a child. It's off screen, but it still has the balls It to also kill. kills a St. Bernard. Yes, it, oh, it does. I, uh, I find it interesting that I get more upset about the dog than, than the, the kid. kid. Yeah, um, and also, but, and also one of the things I, this is another movie like the Poughkeepsie tapes. Very rarely, but the first time I saw this movie, movie guys I literally there is a scene where the the killer is hunting her and she's hiding and I literally found myself holding on to the covers I was legitimately nervous that he was gonna find her also our killer in the movie is really, creepy dude's fucking creepy oh dude he is so fucking creepy like I, if you saw this guy in a back alley late at night I would be like I hope I have a gun in my purse because the guy is fucking yeah. unnerving also like the last fight scene in the greenhouse oh, and stuff. Yeah. it's such a brutal scene it's so good now this movie the reason why it yeah it, considering how much we're praising this movie why is it only number three or number four well because I have to be fair and I know a lot of people tell me Jen I I love this movie until we get to the ending and people will go, how can, you know, she... There's how she can this be also doing this yeah. without spoiling the movie? How can this be happening while also this is happening? Yeah, and how can a character... Yeah, it, it, there, there are, and this is a movie, and I, granted, it isn't perfect. Like, if you really look hard, there are some things that just kind of, at least in a logical sense, probably couldn't work, but it is such a fun ride. This is a movie that I was like, fuck it, I fucking love this movie so much, I get, and it's all, you know, it's a thing that's, you know, you just gotta go with it. I, I, I can't talk about it too much because I'm sure there's people out there that has not seen the ending and I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but I love it. Like, it just fucking works for me even with the little logical problems. Mm -hmm. I fucking love it, but the reason why it's 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 not it, number one is because I know a lot of people get really legitimately pissed off. Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah, I do, it's, but I love it. Speak going from one of my babies to one of yours. Let me check, uh, make sure we have enough. I think we do. 19 minutes, that's enough time. Yeah. Okay. This is gonna be under an hour. Cool. Okay, uh, going from one of your favorite uh, movies of all time to one of my favorite movies of all time. Weirdly both from the extreme re new revival of French cinema, but yeah. Martyrs. Fucking Martyrs. This I thought it would be more brutal than it was. <laughs> I did! People yeah. were... Yeah, that, yeah, that's a story for another day. We need to do <laughs> do martyrs sometime. But we yeah, uh, martyrs. Why is martyrs here? Because it's martyrs is one of the most brutal fucking movies ever made, in my opinion. I this movie gets you super invested into our two main characters. You care every about everything that happens to them, and you are horrified by all the fucking shit that happens to them in this movie. It is amazingly, amazingly brutal. Well, brutal while also being incredibly smart and nuanced. With what it's trying to say in, in its message, which even if you don't like the message the movie's trying to say, you gotta admit, movie's fucking amazingly brutal and dark. Uh, I really love it. Our all our lead, our two leads are amazing in it. Our villains are some of the most hated, hate easy to hate people in any movie. I love the fuck out of martyrs. Like, I there's so many things I could say about like why uh, this movie is, but a lot of them are spoilers, so I can't. But yeah, just see martyrs, specifically the one from 2009, not the one from 2015. That one we don't talk about that one. That's a story. Because that's martyrs a story. never die. That's a story for another day. Martyrs but no. never die. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> so fucking stupid.
stupid guy. He, th if anyone wants to ever trigger the boy, talk about the American remake of Martyrs. Yeah. Because Martyrs never die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. stupid. Yeah, he, he, that'll trigger him. That'll trigger him. So our number two, our which is another one that I don't think people would see coming considering I don't think we've ever talked about this movie before. We have, but But not, in very loose sense. Yeah, and that is from a favorite director of ours. Yeah, uh huh. You'll probably be seeing... From the Japan. Yeah, you'll probably be seeing a few more of his movies down the pipeline, and that is a Takashi Miike, and it is Ichi the Killer. Ichi the fucking killer. Um, again, what, it has a really brilliant scene. The, the, this is ha this is the one I was talking about when I was like, when I watched this movie for the first time, and I was I saw that opening where Ichi's jerking off to the, to like a girl getting is it she gets raped or something or just getting killed and he jerks off and he, and then the title comes out of his semen and you see, and it makes Ichi the killer I was like this is amazing this is one of the greatest movies ever made. This is true art. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and even aside from that, I love Ichi the Killer. I love the fuck out of this movie. I it's do too. so good. I, it's one that you just, you can't really, there's no complaints about this movie. And granted, we are big fans of this director. It's, it's very much like, like I find this so interesting because like all of Mikkei's movies have this besides his most well-known of them, which is Audition. Mm -hmm. uh, it's It has a super ghoulish sense of humor because at heart this is a black comedy yeah yeah at, at true heart of hearts it's like a lot of korean drama it's like like i saw the devil or the host which yeah. the host was very close to making this list for me mm -hmm. um but it's like a lot of those where yet heart they're kind of just black comedies but super fucking pitch black ghoulish black comedies which i really appreciate i love the hell out of each of the killer it's such a weird bizarre fun movie it's a great movie it it a well it'd have to be for our number yeah. two. There's only one other movie left for our number one. And kid. considering you, what, your dis what your honorable mention was, I'm pretty sure everybody's figuring it's one of two movies. You're probably right. Yeah. So, uh, Devil's Rejects. Devil's, fu Devil's fucking I Rejects. I still would say if this was just a complete gen list, Halloween would probably be. Yeah. It might not be no. number one, but it'd probably be in the top three. No, it wouldn't, but Devil's fucking Rejects. You can call us as to is that the most token answer we could ever give for the two th best of the 2000s, but fuck it. Sometimes the token answer is the right answer, because Devil's Rejects is groundbreaking. It, it is. It, it it's one of the few movies that's on this list. As much as I love a lot of these movies, like, yeah, Strangers revived Home Invasion. Open Water revived the shark genre, which you could very much argue if that's a good thing or not. American Psycho di a little, uh, brought back dissecting serial killers in movies. Black Christmas is fucking awesome. Uh, Wolf Creek <laughs> and Ichi and Martyrs and High Tension all like brought back an interest to foreign films and American horror. Mm -hmm. um, but Devil's Rejects brought back gave horror balls again because before Devil's Re I would say House of Thousand Curses but you know same director same same series mm -hmm. uh, Devil's Rejects brought like uh, brought brutalness back to horror films from the pussified 90s when we do our 90s list next month like the, the 90s are gonna be interesting because there it had some great stuff it but did. overall a lot of like the classic stuff that got mainstream attention was really pussified uninteresting stuff for tweens whereas Devil's Rejects was like no fuck that we're gonna go back to goddamn Boston 70s we're gonna make horror fucking scary and horrific again and we're gonna scare the shit out of Christian house moms Woohoo! which we, I think everybody can get behind. Yeah, yeah, we can. Um, well, also being an incredibly interesting and in-depth and weirdly mature look at serial killers and humanity at, on its own. And I also think, and I, I know you're going to hate this, but uh, it's also about family. It's oh, about it a is. family dynamic because um, these are, they are monsters. They are, they, they're, they're like Mick in a way. They're, I was actually going to mention that Captain yeah. Spaw, how you were talking about Mick of like, he's a kind of a piece of shit, but you love him and the laugh and like there's certain scenes where he's super joyous, but then he can just scare the shit out of you with one look Spalding has that same effect exactly exactly but these are these are these are horrible characters and yet they have become beloved icons of horror and they're rapists they're murderers baby is just fucking cuckoo B baby's fucking bucks. crazy tiny's 
big. Yeah. Uh, fucking, uh, fucking, uh, Mama fucking Firefly. Mama Fireflies and Net and Infomaniac. But Otis they love is, each other. Otis is just fucking Charles Manson unapologetically. Exactly. And Captain Spaulding's fun. Yeah, and, but but they love uh, their family. It is about family. They are a family dynamic. And Grandpa is a treasure. Yes, Grandpa is a treasure. But this is just a perfect film. It really is. And uh, even people who hate Rob Zombie generally give a pass to Devil's Rejects because it is that good. He he isn't a director for everyone, but when he gets it right, he gets it right. Mm -hmm. And it is a great movie. It really is. Captain Spaulding is a beloved horror mm -hmm. icon that will never be forgotten. I would argue all three of them are. Oh yeah, all three of them are, but with with with, with, with Spaulding specifically. Yeah, you know. and Bill Mosley. I mean, you you can't get enough of Bill Mosley. Mm -hmm. He just is a perfect one. And and, and Sherry Moon Zombie Baby is a really fun character. She's she's probably the craziest of them all. The chicken fucking scene. Exactly. You look like, that boy looks like, like a chicken, chicken fucker. fucker. Now you, my friend, you do not like you look like you would be fucking chickens. <laughs> that boy over there, on the other hand, he looks like he's partaking in some chicken pussy. I love the look he gives too. I just, <laughs> and it's fucking Michael Berryman, so it's just yeah. like, god damn it. It, it. It's just so beautiful. And Rob Zombie, he has a style, and the style is not for everyone, but this is one, even if it's not your, generally your style, it works. And why does it work? Because the film is fucking genius. The it fucking is. ending! Uh, the ending? The fucking one of, I'm gonna, I said this when we reviewed the movie, and I stand by it, this is the greatest ending in any horror movie ever. Yes, exactly. This is one where people were legitimately mad at Three From Hell, even before it came out, because they said, why fuck with that ending? Mm -hmm. You were one of them. I was one of those. Three From Hell ultimately won me, won me over, as we said, with the, uh, with the 2000s title list. That movie ultimately did win both of us over, but I still say this is the perfect ending to any horror movie ever. I can't mm. think of another one I love more than this. Greatest use of Freebird. Greatest ever. use of music in any movie ever also. Yeah, right. Especially Freebird. Yeah, it's just, it's it's poetic. I mean, it, it is. It's weird to say about a hillbilly, you know, clan of killers, but it is almost a poetic movie. It's a beautiful movie. It ever. is. It's like, like that, we were talking about this, this we were arguing about this when we were figuring out because you really wanted Halloween on the list. I did. Um, but uh, we argued that like you, a lot of people really hate Rob Zombie because they say he relies on stereotypes and token characters and say he's for like you know edgy teenagers as they're the only people who like his movies. But Devil's Rejects is weirdly mature and introspective for it him. Is. Like it's a very there's a lot of layers to dissect with this movie. Ex which you got you got even if you don't like the dude you got to give him credit. That takes a lot to do well, of you know a story that's you know about fucking people like this and have a scene where they talk about fucking chickens while also being incredibly deep and mature. Exactly. And also, it's the, the family, it's not just about their family. We also got to remember our uh, the cop that is tracking Our them. villain is amazing. But is he a villain? That, yeah. Because it always makes me question because basically he just wants vengeance for his brother mm -hmm. and he gives such a fucking wonderful performance. I love mm -hmm. this actor. And, you know, he, he is going to, get, to do vengeance no matter what. He sort of of reminds me, but in a much more serious way, of Dennis Hopper. In, uh, yeah, he very Texas much is. He's very much is. he's more serious. He's a serious version. But that, yeah, he's a serious version of, of fucking Hopper. From he basically Saint is going to be vengeance for the Lord and for his brother. Yeah. And you know, he he is kind of a, a monster to these people, but he has a damn good reason. And those mo those things are always compelling to me when good people, you know, go to the other side because they're trying to get mm -hmm. justice for something. And it really makes you. Quit Question, much like Cannibal Holocaust, who the real monster is, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm being funny, but I'm also being serious. I love when we have this thing where it's not black and white, because I don't think life is black and yeah, white, absolutely. and I think that just really works well. So yeah, Devil's Rejects is just an amazing movie. It's an awesome movie. I still say Halloween is a great movie, too. I do. I know, and I'm not trying to... You guys are probably thinking, oh, she's just saying this to piss us off. No, I'm not. I just really honestly believe that. I love that. I love Brad Dorff's performance in that movie. I love Malcolm McDowell. I love everything, and I think that that movie gets a little hate that's a little bit unjust. I know, Brad, you're screaming at the at the TV at me right now, but the boy doesn't particularly like it, so... I think it's a good movie until it becomes a remake of Halloween. I love it. I, I, I do, but 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 I but I have to also acknowledge that Devil's Rejects, on a certain level, probably is superior. At least in the fact that it's one that people seem to you know yeah, generate more. Absolutely. To. Yeah, I would say Halloween is just as good though. Yeah. 
Yeah, but you no, know. but okay, you're right. <laughs> you have the right to be wrong. I get that. I get so, that. So yeah, that was our top twenty. That was 20. our top twenty. Uh, like I said on a stream and earlier, we are going to be doing the rest of the decades. I know. I know that that won't be for twenty for twenty unless like this, they just happen to line up. So if it, so, if sometime in April you guys happen to do the top twenty nineties, that'll be top twenty for twenty. But otherwise, sometime in April we'll be doing our top twenty favorite for the nineties. And nineties are going to be interesting. And the eighties. In the and the 70s, and the 60s, and the 50s, and the 40s, and the 30s, and the 20s, and maybe the 10s, if we can find enough stuff. The 10s might be hard, but for sure at least to the 20s. Exactly. And like, a, and, and the 90s are going to be interesting because the 90s are an interesting time. Because weirdly, we have a lot of like, you know, free time lately. Yeah, yeah. No the, real reason. Everything is fine. Yeah, we're on vacation. We're Everything on is fine. We're on vacation. This is fine. So, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, so have that to look forward to later down the line. That's, yeah, and, and the 80s, you have, what, 50? I'm years? working on my 80s list right now. It's a compilation of 48 films. I have to cut down to 20 right now, so that's going to be hard. And that's not even counting mine. Yeah, so, so that's yeah. going to be So, yeah, that'll be fun. But that's for another time, yeah, hopefully, unless they do unless Jason pulls a really cool theme out of the bucket for 20 for 20. Uh, the next top 20 will be top 20 for 1990, which will have nothing to do with 20 for 20, where just doing it. Also, I have a bit of OCD, so I have to. Fi I feel like we have to finish uh, the that. rest of the decade list. So yeah, I get that. And again, amazing uh, list from Joe and Jason. Yes, they yes, make, great they idea. Have, we, love, we always enjoy doing these, even if we don't always participate because. <laughs> Time's a bitch. Yeah. But it, they're always enjoyable to watch other people's choices and stuff. Yes, and we're looking forward to hearing what everyone else has to say. Absolutely. Um, and again, if if we have some choices or we have some movies that didn't make the list that you're like, why, did, you know, this is a classic. Why didn't this make it on the list? You got to remember that these are personal preference and it's no hate to a movie you love or a movie you hate. It's just, you know, subjective. Art is subjective. Or we plain out didn't fucking see the movie yet. Uh, yeah, that could be it. We didn't see every single movie from the 2000s. We're only human, as Billy Joel says. Mm, I'm all, I haven't seen every movie from the 2000s. I'm only human. Basically, yeah, so yeah. My favorite Billy Joel song. Fuck you. So yeah, so with all that out of the way, I hope you guys are enjoying your fucking vacations too. Remember, it's not quarantine, it's fucking vacation. We're all on it. We're all on it together. Everyone out there, stay safe. Um, you know, make sure you have enough bleach, but don't drink the bleach. Don't drink the bleach. Don't do it. Don't. Even if everyone's, even if are the younger people watching this, even if they say that's the cool thing to do, it's not. If everyone jumped Drinking off, drinking bleach, don't do, <laughs> do it. it. Even but. if, even if, uh, you know, they say, you know, you need to jump off the bridge while drinking bleach, you know, don't That's do it. That's pretty fucking metal, though. Don't you're... get this started. Okay. So yeah, so no kid. Oh, all kidding aside, guys, stay safe out there. We love you. These are hard times, but we're all gonna get through this together. Um, and yeah, uh, if you are new around here and you happen to like the contents of this channel, please hit that subscriber button because we appreciate every subscriber we get. We love you all. Stay safe. And we'll come back with you real soon with another video. So see you real soon, guys. Bye-bye. Cheers.